How you doing? All right, we'll get started here. We're now joined by Eric Kennedy. So please use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. As a reminder, student athlete today cannot see you. So when you are called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation first. First, we'll go to Joe. Joe, please state your name and affiliation. Joe Cook with Inside Texas. Eric, that fourth inning was one of the, you know, that was the intense point of this game. Did you feel like your team having a lot of experience with these different postseason situations had an advantage and was able to stay a little bit calmer than the volunteers were? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, going back to the Super Regional, um, USF hit that tie and two run home run in, in the top of the ninth. So um, we were ready for any situation. You know, it's just the way we like it. We don't want it to be easy. And, uh, you know, we were ready for whatever Tennessee had for us or a great ball club. And, uh, you know, we just kept our heads down and kept going to work and grinding out of our bats. Next, we'll go to Danny. Please state your name and affiliation. Uh, Danny Davis, Austin American Statesman. Eric. Was there any panic in this team after Mississippi State? And you know what was kind of going on in practice yesterday? And how did you guys feel when you uh, came to the ballpark today? Uh, no, there's no panic. I mean, obviously, striking out 21 times in a game is unacceptable. But you know, after the game, Coach Pierce was like, "Just keep your head up. You know, we're going to go to work tomorrow." And that's exactly what we did. We had a great batting practice yesterday and uh, got our good work in. We had a team meeting. You know, kind of just cleared our minds, um, put put that game behind us, and then. You know, coming out and taking BP on the field today, you could tell everybody was super focused and everybody was ready to go. And that's in the past. You know, nobody's thinking about that game anymore. Now we'll go to Dustin. Dustin McComb with OrangeBloods.com. Eric, that big at bat in the second inning. You've talked about starting your swing earlier, getting that foot down, getting that timing. Take us through that at bat. You found up a pitch barely 3 2 to stay alive, which it looked like you got a hard fastball there down the middle and you just put a great swing on it. Yeah. yeah, so I was just trying to get, uh, like you said, just get started early. And luckily, I got I caught enough of the piece of that one before that. I, I mean, he threw me all fastballs. I don't know how many pitches it was prior to the home run. It was six or seven fastballs. So I had my timing down. And um, the pitch before, I fouled right off. So luckily, he left one right over the middle plate. And I was ready for it, having seen um, several fastballs throughout the at bat. Next, we'll take a question. Nick, please state your name and affiliation. Yeah, Nick Moyle, San Antonio Express News. Uh, Eric, just wanted to ask about Silas. You know, came up with a really huge RBI double. Helped you all turn that double play when you have the bases loaded, no outs. I mean, what's it been like for you all to, you know, watch this young guy kind of turn into a playmaker for you, especially on this stage? Oh, it's awesome. You know, he goes to work for us every day, you know. Um, it's tough being a catcher, you know, you obviously have to hit, but then you have to deal with the pitchers, you know, so after every at bat, he'll have the starting pitcher or whoever's in the game at that time asking him stuff and coach Allen um, will be talking about the opposing team's hitters with him. So, you know, he's been grinding all year. He's a great catcher, the best in the country and it's awesome seeing him come through with that big hit because, you know, he deserves it. He's been working just as hard as anybody and it was just awesome to see him come through. Next question is from Kirk. Kirk, go ahead. Yeah, Kurt Bowl from the Austin American Statesman. Uh, Eric, you guys seemed really loose today, even after y'all got behind. And uh, obviously, like you said, there's no panic at all. But did you feel like y'all played more Texas baseball today with your defense, clutch hitting, Tanner Witts pitching? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's playing loose starting the ninth inning against Mississippi State. We were all kind of laughing. Two of those laughing. It's like, you know, it can't get any worse. So just play loose, go out there and let it fly. And, um, we did have a little rally then and then it just carried into over today. You know, that's what um, the big message was in the meeting yesterday is just stay loose, you know, enjoy it. We're here for a reason, but, you know, just stay loose. And if we play our game, not many people are going to be able to beat us. All right, next we'll go to Cole. Cole, go ahead. Uh, Cole Thompson, LonghornsCountry.com. Well, Eric, Eric, when you break down Tanner's game, first appearance in a college World Series, like most of y'all, but for him being a freshman and to do what he did for as many innings and to close out the game, what does that say just about him and the future of Texas pitching? Uh, the future of Texas pitching is in good hands. You know, he's as a freshman, he's the most poised pitcher out there I've ever seen. You know, nothing phases him. Um, he's, he's been nails all season, and that just continued today on the biggest stage. I know a lot of guys who, if that was their first appearance, you know, they'd be walking a bunch of guys or they wouldn't have their stuff. But he was able to go what he's been doing all year, and uh, he's been great for us all year. And it's just so fun to watch. You know when he gets in the game that uh, the other team's going to be shut down, and we just have to rely on our bats to get it going. 
All right, next we'll go to Jeff. Jeff, please say your name and affiliation. Jeff Howell, Horns 24-7. Eric, kind of piggybacking off what Kirk asked you a minute ago, um, you know, two games into this thing now, do you feel like, you know, whether it's the environment or getting used to the stadium or just being in Omaha for the first time, all that stuff is kind of out of everybody's system and you guys are just, you know, focusing on, on just playing your game and playing baseball? Yeah, for sure. I think the first few at-bats for each and every one of us, you know, it's kind of eye-opening with the huge crowd and the great environment. But once we got settled down, you know, that we showed it today, you know, we got settled down and, um, we were back to doing what we do, and it was great to see everybody come through with big hits, and our pitching and defense do great as well. All right, we'll take one more question here. We'll go to Cedric. Cedric, go ahead. Hey, Kay. Uh, I know you hit that bomb, and you guys had some timely hitting today, but what did those two double plays in the third and fourth inning do for the spirit in that dugout? Oh, they were huge. That double play, I believe that we turned that the half inning after the home run. I mean, they had bases loaded, no outs. And just that changed the whole momentum of the whole inning and pretty much the rest of the game. That could have gotten away from us real, real easily, but Cam made a great play and then side with a great backhand. Not a lot of catchers would be able to do that. And then getting the guy at first, you know, they, they kind of seemed like they were starting to get back in it, but that kind of sucked the life out of them. And then we were able to take advantage of that later. Um, you know, we just played great defense and it was, it was awesome to see us suck the life out of their offense. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. Thanks. So we'll have uh, Tanner Witt here shortly. Again, as a reminder, please be familiar with the raise hand function and uh, use that in order to ask questions. And we'll get started here in just a moment. Okay, we now have Tanner Whip here. So, uh, again, once you're called on, please uh, state your name and affiliation. First, we'll go to Danny. Danny, go ahead. Um, Tanner, at this point, it's survive in advance and live to see another day. You guys did exactly that today. How confident is, is this team as you guys move on to Thursday in another elimination game? You know, it's great. Uh, offense really picked us up there. Uh, had a big game, kind of broke open. And then, uh, you know, my job's just to just to give our team the best chance to win. And, uh, you know, I just went out there, and it could have been the end of the season, but I don't want it to be the end of the season. I love these guys too much, and, uh, you know, I was just trying to do anything I can for them. Next, we'll go to Dustin. Dustin McComas, OrangeBloods.com. Tanner, how much has that change-up usage really helped you get through a lineup multiple times, especially attacking lefties? And also, too, did, did you get tired at any point? I mean, career high in innings, career high in pitches, or was the adrenaline just keep, keeping you going and pulling you through? Yeah, you know, the adrenaline definitely helps. Uh, it's a big, big atmosphere. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I'm just trying to do anything I can to keep myself, keep our team in the game. And, uh, yeah, that changeup was big. Uh, it's been big this whole season. Been trying to build it up, uh, and it was, it was comfortable out there, and I was throwing it well. And, uh, you know, again, I'm just trying to do anything I can to give our team the best chance to win. So, uh, you know, I'm going to go out there and do anything I can. We'll take a question from Joe. Joe, go ahead. Joe Cook, Inside Texas. Tanner, can you just explain what you saw on both those double play balls and, and how big they were uh, for your outing today? Yeah, you know, they, they've been huge all season, the defense. Uh, you know, I think we got one of the best defenses in the country, and uh, they showed it today. Uh, you know, every day they come out, they put the work in, and uh, it shows in the games. And, you know, our pitchers, I know I love it. Uh, they have a lot of energy, and, uh, you know, we feed off that, and it's big. All right, we'll take a question from Kirk. Kirk, go ahead. Yeah, Tanner, you just don't show any nerves at all. I mean, can you describe the emotions you're feeling? Do you even know you're pitching in the College World Series as poised as you see? No, definitely. Uh, but, you know, I live for this moment. This is the moment I've always dreamed for. Uh, I love that big, big stage, big atmosphere. And, um, you know, I, I feel like I only get better in those situations because that's what I live for. Just a reminder to please say your name and affiliation. Next, we'll go to Cole. Cole, go ahead. Uh, Cole Thompson, Longhorns Country. Tanner, when you got to back to the dugout, did Tristan tell you anything uh, going forward? And then how did you stay loose during that big fourth inning with Silas and the bats coming through to be able to pick up the lead? You know, he just, he just said, way to pick me up. And, you know, that's part of baseball, just picking your teammates up. And, uh, you know, I'm, my job's just – I'm a bullpen guy, so I'm just trying to do the best to keep my team in the game. And uh, so he just told me, great job, way to get out of that. And I told him I'm going to keep going for him. 
and everybody else on the team. And, uh, you know, it was a long inning, but it's a good inning because we're, we're on the good side of it. We scored a lot of runs. So, you know, I, I like it. And as a reminder, if you have a question, please use the raise hand function. Uh, we'll take a question from Cedric. Cedric, go ahead. Hey, Tanner, Cedric Golden, Austin American Statesman. Um, what were the conversations like at the hotel last night? You guys, I know you guys wanted to avoid checkout day on Wednesday, and now you're going to get to stick around for a while. What were those conversations like? You know, it's a, a lot of belief in our teammates, a lot of belief in each other. You know, we've done that all season. We've faced adversity a lot this year. And, uh, you know, we've responded really well all year. And uh, we're just going to continue to do that. Just have a good mind uh, and just have fun. I mean, we're best when we have fun. We're, we're a loose young team, and we like to have fun. So we're just going to keep doing that. All right, we'll take a question from Nick. Nick, go ahead. Uh, Nick Moyle, San Antonio Express News. Yeah, Tanner, this is obviously, you know, your long, longest outing with Texas. You're just curious, you know, what you were thinking as you were getting deeper and deeper into it. And, and at any point, did you kind of have to tell the coaches, you know, I, I don't want to be taken out. I want to finish this thing. No, I, I, I wanted it the whole time. I, I felt like I only got better and better and felt better and better throughout throughout the game. I felt my, my best stuff was kind of later in my outing. And, uh, you know, that's big. I, I just wanted to do whatever I could, again, just to keep my team in the game. And, uh, you know, it's, it's survival. You know, it's elimination games. And uh, you got to do whatever you can for your team to win. So, you know, that's all I was trying to do. I wasn't focused on how long I was going, how short I was going. I just want to get in there and keep my team in the game. Our right, next, we'll take a question from Danny. Uh, Tanner, you guys are obviously a little biased, but Eric just said that he believes Silas is the best catcher in the country. I'm kind of wondering what uh, what you think about your guy, what you think about number four back there. 100%. I'll go to war with that guy any day. I love that guy. He's been huge for us behind the plate. Made a huge play today. That could have been the difference in the game right there. That could have broken open for them, but he made a great play, picked up Cam there, and, uh, you know, it was huge. He's been huge all season for us, and, uh, you know, I'll go to war with him. All right, Tanner, thank you for your time today. Thank you all very much. Hook them. We will have a Coach David Pierce here with us momentarily. And as a reminder, please use the raise hand function uh, to uh, get into question queue. All right, we now have Coach Pierce here with us. So uh, we'll begin with an opening statement from Coach and then go to questions. As a reminder, use the raise hand function to indicate you'd like to ask a question. And please, uh, when you are called on for your question, state your name and affiliation. So, Coach, if you can go ahead uh, with a brief opening statement. Uh, I just thought we did a great job of competing all day um, from top to bottom. We had so many stars we had so many guys that stepped up today and that's what we needed uh it was so clutch in the second when they put up two and ek's big three run home run i mean two tremendous double plays that we turned with the five two three by silas on the pick and picking up cam and then tremendous job of uh, mitch going to the four hole on the four six three double play and then you know just kept tacking on some runs a couple of two out rbis and then just Tanner Witt. And you look at Tanner there, it's a, the most he's extended this year um, in a time we needed it. And, you know, Tristan Stevens has been so consistent for us, but boy, that's why you call it a staff and that's why you call it a team. So many guys stepped up today, which we needed. Our first question comes from uh, Dustin. Please say your name and affiliation. Dustin McComas, WarnsBloods.com. David, I imagine you, you weren't surprised at all by this team's response today, but what kind of vibe did you get from them in those moments following the loss and then in practice and some downtime before today's game? Oh, they were frustrated. They were embarrassed. Um, you know, the way we got beat, if we'd have lost a two-to-one two, two to one game and we hit a lot of hard ground balls or line drives and they made plays, it would be one thing, but – to just get embarrassed with – it's a good staff and just dang good team with Mississippi State, but uh, I just think that their work that they put in from day one came out. And you have to be able to trust it, but then you also have to understand 
that if we continue to stay frustrated, we're not going to play well today. And so they, it was a very mature approach by them, uh, you know, not slamming anything, not pointing fingers, just understanding that it was a bad day and we still have opportunity to play. Next question is from Danny. Danny, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, David, Silas isn't a rookie, obviously, but when did you kind of know that he was going to be that guy, that he was going to be, you know, a guy who could make the defensive plays he's made the last two two days and, you know, manage his pitching staff for you guys? He's just got a, a knack to, to soothe the pitching staff. He's very good with them. They're best friends. Uh, he, he has a sense of humor when he's off the field. Uh, he's very respectful. And, and this kid just comes to play every single day. And, I, and that's what I see in this team. It's just, you know, we talked there at the end. And it's not even about anyone's numbers right now. It's just about competing and competing together and just uh, playing for that next game. So he's been tremendous. I mean, behind the plate, the things he does that are so good that are unnoticed. And then when he steps up on a big play like today and threw a couple of guys out the other day against Mississippi State. So he's kind of a rock for us back there. And, you know, I credit him. Coach Miller, uh, DJ Petrinsky has been unbelievable with Silas in a new role. And uh, I, I just appreciate what, the work that they put in. As a reminder, please state your name and affiliation. Next, we'll go to Bob. Hey, Coach Bob Ballou, CBS Austin. Just expanding on Silas a little bit. I mean, the play in the third um, and then the base hit to, to untie the game 4-4. Four, four. I mean, those, those two plays had to be the biggest two, and that could have really changed the game either way. Um, can you talk about him just coming up big in those moments? Huge. I mean, just trusting himself. I mean, the play, bases loaded, nobody out. And and Cam just goosed the ball. And Silas never panicked. Um, looked like a shortstop on the pick and then throws a strike. I mean, I told him just now, that's one of the best plays I've ever seen. I mean, ever, because of the situation. If that ball gets past him, they score two um, with two guys at – they, they scored two and have a runner at, first, uh, at second and third with nobody out. It could have unraveled on us. So, I mean, that for me, that was a play of the game, no doubt. And then a big two out, uh, two RBIs. Next question is from Kirk. Please state your name and affiliation. Yeah, Kirk Bowles from the American Statesman. Uh, David, congratulations on your first College World Series win as the Longhorn head coach. Uh, I don't know how relieving that is, but also – and Tanner Witt kind of saved your bullpen for the rest of the series, correct? Yes, he did. I mean, we're to be in the loser's bracket one and one, we're in pretty good shape with our arms right now. We we feel like we have, uh, you know, Pete ready to go if that's who we go with. We still got to talk about it, but uh, then you still got a lot of guys fresh. And, you know, you may see Tristan Stevens later in this series as well. And, th and, and yeah. Kurt, and thank you for uh, mentioning that. That. That was a big deal for our team and for our staff. Hey, Joe, go ahead. Joe Cook, Inside Texas. David, you talked about the, the maturity the team showed. Do you think that shone through the most in that fourth inning when it was a really fiery and competitive game? Both teams seemed – I don't know if your team was chippy. Tennessee was obviously chippy. Do you think it? that's when it shone through the most this game? No doubt. I think we held our composure uh, when things were kind of getting a little emotional. Our guys did a nice job of allowing that to just happen, not get caught up in it, and just to play the game. I mean, we worked so hard to play this game, and uh, they appreciate it, and that's what they did. They just kind of sat back, allowed it to pass, and then just keep playing. All right, we'll take the next question from Cole. Cole, go ahead. Uh, Cole Thompson, LonghornsCountry.com. David, congrats on the win. Uh, Tanner told us earlier that he wanted to go out for the ninth. He wanted, he felt that his momentum was at an all-time high going into the last frame. Did you tell him anything before he took the mound in the ninth inning? And overall, <laughs> just his performance, what does this mean for the future of Texas pitching? His performance was just outstanding on the biggest stage when the team needed him more so than ever. Uh, when you get into postseason baseball, guys have to step up and – he did exactly that. The only thing I told him is that if you're out of gas, Nixon wants the ball, and he's ready to go. And that was that was a fun moment because he definitely wanted the ball. Next, we'll uh, go to Cedric. Cedric, go ahead. Yeah, David Cedric Golden, Austin American Statesman. Uh, tomorrow morning when you go down for breakfast at the hotel, you 
You can leave your bags in the room. That, that's that's got to feel good. How important was it for you guys, not only to, to get this win to stay alive, but to put the Mississippi State thing in the past and get back to playing the type of ball we've seen all year? No, I think it's so important because we've worked so hard for these moments, and we we didn't want to leave here with the bitter taste. Um, you know, we still have a lot of baseball in our minds to play, so – that next opportunity, it's huge for us. Uh, you know, and you look up and down our lineup, we still have a lot of young players. And for them to have that experience of playing in Omaha and then to um, kind of position themselves to catch their breath, uh, have another practice, and get into the flow of this tournament. I know in 18, we played the opening game. Uh, we lost that one. Then we had to come back in the loser's bracket, and it seemed like – we were in and out of Omaha, and I think it benefits our team if we could just get in the flow of this tournament and understand we can play with anybody in the country. Next, we have Chip. Chip, go ahead. Chip Brown, horns 24-7. Um, David, what uh, what was the difference in your guys at the plate today as compared to game one? Well, they got challenged. I mean, we, we challenged them yesterday, and – at practice, it's just it's just not acceptable. We talked about a lot of things that happened to us that you know we were in coach prevention, and you know sometimes young people just don't pay attention as much as they need to, and um, you know when you get humiliated and you get stung, uh, either you're going to back down and, and and tuck your tail or you're going to do something about it and. You know, they made a commitment that they're going to try to shorten up their swings if they got to get off the knob. Um, just whatever it does to just find a way to get to 90. It's not so much of being the the guy that comes up with the big hit. Just don't force your at-bats. Trust yourself. Trust all the work that you've put in. Trust your coaches. And then catch your breath and enjoy com uh, the competition. I mean, it's just it's what – this is what you prepare for, and so why press that and and put yourself in a in a position where you're feeling anxiety? Um, and it's many times easier said than done, but you know it's just another baseball game, and there's more people watching. It's a national audience, but it's still a game, and that's how we have to approach it. Next, we'll go to Dustin. Dustin McComish, orangeblaze.com. David, we're not that far removed from Eric basically being a platoon guy or a guy that was his confidence is really low. He has the walk-off hit in the Super Regional, three-run homer today. How much different has he been in his confidence the last few weeks, and, and how much of a different lineup are you guys when he's providing that sort of presence? I mean, things like stealing third when a guy throws behind him at second base and that ends up being a run for you guys. He just – he might just put pressure on you, uh, you know, in so many different ways, and – you know, as a pitcher or a staff, you you don't you you're always telling yourselves, do not let those two guys beat you with the base on ball. They're going to have to earn it. We're going to take the bunt away, and so if they are having the right approach, they tend to get good pitches to hit. And yeah, you've definitely noticed his confidence go up. And I just think, you know, playing the game and it's a difficult game, and when you start trying to change things or trying to uh, replace guys in the lineup, it never works. And so you got to fight through that. Uh, Eric has earned the right to be a starter, and he earned the right to fail and struggle. And so now his confidence is back, and, and we are definitely happy that he's seeing the ball well and helping this team win. All right, final question, Coach. We'll go to Danny. David, I'm sure it wasn't easy to go grab Tristan there in the fourth. Um, when did you know it was time to make that move, and how quickly can he bounce back from a 60-ish you know, pitch in outing? Well, we just always talk about how the ball gives you information, and, you know, he was a little flat. He couldn't get his slider down. Uh, they were barreling, guy, uh, barreling balls. He walked three guys. It was so uncharacteristic of Tristan Stevens. I mean, I just talked to him in the dugout, and it's like we're never going to ask guys to be perfect. Um, but he was awesome. I mean, he understood it and has already told me that, that he wants the ball. And uh, so that's huge. Um, he'll be able to bounce back. We're going to probably have to get through Thursday before he's uh, eligible to help us. All right, Coach, thank you for your time today. 
All right, appreciate it. Thank you all for participating. You can find a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.baritone.com and transcripts are available at NCAA 